In a recent video, I blew up a completely innocent light shade with a small explosive charge, and the device I used was a common effect in the theatre, television, film industries called a robotic. And a robotic is, uh, in this case, it's described as a directional short circuit. What it does is it creates a, a burst of sparks, like an electrical malfunction. And I've got gloves on uh, in this instance because I'm going to be taking this one to bits to show you what's inside. Very simple. It's basically just a little mortar that shoots out sparks. So uh, without further to do, let's uh, open this up. So here's a knife. Uh, this is not a recommended procedure, by the way, opening live pyrotechnics, because there is always a risk that it may go wrong. I'm just going to just nudge up here so you can actually see what's happening here. So I'm just going to take a wee slit down here. Now, it's a toss-up whether I'm actually going to detonate this forcibly in my hand and will get burnt through the fabric, uh, or whether I'm just going to cut myself. It's always very exciting. I should mention that these put out quite hot sparks. I know this because... My phone screen is now cracked. <laughs> As happens, I always seem to burn my phone screens. That People were asking, why don't you use a proper camera? Well, A, uh, in this day and age, it's actually quite viable to use a phone as a recording device. It's very convenient, it's in your pocket. And also, it's a lot cheaper to replace or repair when you've exposed it to violent explosive forces. So uh, let's uh, see if I can get this open now. I see the bottom is hot melt glued. That's an interesting twist versus the old clays of yore. It makes sense. Right, so let's see if I can prise this apart with a screwdriver, perhaps. What I'm expecting here is just a pile of stuff to just pour out. Oh, there it is. There is this stuff. So that'll be a mixture of black powder, probably. And uh, it's got a little um, cap on top that's designed to allow it to, A, keep it in and also provide a bit of back pressure. Uh, and then it's got a set of cardboard plug. Uh, is that a cardboard plug? And then it's got the hot melt glue. Oh, I've just sprayed that everywhere. Well, that's my bench covered in explosive matter now. That's exciting. Let's sweep it into a wee pile. The temptation is just to light that, but I know it would just go everywhere. This is not the place to light at the moment. There's so much combustible stuff in the vicinity. That's also why I'm not blowing stuff up at my bench quite so much at the moment. It's uh, because of the combustible nature of everything. So let's, uh, now I've got that open, here's the little match. Let's uh, get the gloves off now that I feel a bit safer. And we'll uh, investigate this a bit further. So let's bring in the notepad. Uh, now I've got this uh, pile of explosive matter in the middle of my bench. I'll just shove it to the side as one does. There we go. That's uh, that's all the explosives out of the way. So looking at the, this device here, let, I'll bring this up and then I'll just try and focus on it. Will it catch it? That little pip in there is called an electric match. This is a particularly tiny little electric match. And if I was to uh, blow this up right now, yeah, I should blow it up right now. No, I'll blow it up at the end. Uh, but let's take a look at what uh, the operation of this. So here's a notepad and I'll just uh, come back out just a tiny bit so it's actually visible and focus on that and maybe even cut the contrast down a wee bit. Oh, that's kind of excessive, but that's okay, it'll do. So here's the idea. Uh, the device is a cardboard tube plugged at one end. And the plug in this instance is, well, let's uh, go into this a wee bit further. Let's uh, get a pair of snips and cut this open. Slightly undersized pair of snips, but I don't think it's going to be terribly hard. Is it all hot melt glue? I th think it actually is quite a modest amount of hot melt glue. It might be a little... Uh, it, seem, it looks like a cardboard disc, yeah. It, it looks like a cardboard disc with the device pushed through it, and then the hot melt glue then filled in at the back of it just to seal it in position and also prevent this effect from blowing out the back instead of the front. So yeah, so we've got that uh, little electric match sticking through like that with the wires coming through. Um, and a uh, fill in here of the, a mixture of the lift charge, the black powder most likely, 
Um, and the sparkly bits, I'm not sure what the sparkly bits will, are, will be. Uh, there's a multiple of compositions could be used for that. And then on the top, there's just this little paper cup that sits down like that and keeps it all in. It's, it's pressed in to keep it all sort of... I was going to say compressed, but it's not actually compressed that hard. It's fairly loose. And the idea of it being loose is that if you've got lots of uh, loose particles, uh, then when the flames engulf them, when it starts going off, the whole lot will go up at once. If that was a solid mass of explosive compound, then you'd have what's called a gerb or fountain. And it would burn slowly because it can only burn in the surface. With the loose powder, it goes off the bang. A bit like why they put sugar, uh, large quantities of sugar in foods and ground flour, because that also gets into your system very quickly. It goes off like gunpowder in your stomach, so to speak. The, the perils of uh, processed food. So um, that's it. Uh, so it's, it, the Let's just write glue down here. This is the construction, the cardboard tube, the uh, little electric match, and then the composition, and then the little cup to hold it in place until it blows out and then ejects forcibly out from the tube. The electric matches are often made. I mean, the construction is such that it's often uh, the standard electric matches are a tiny little piece of, well, that's actually far too big. In reality, they'd be about that size. That's even too big again. Imagine a small piece of printed circuit board material with a sort of blob of stuff in the end of it and two wires tacked on. That's an electric match. And the way they make them is that if you were to actually zoom in up close, you'd have the fiberglassy material of the circuit board material with the copper on both sides and a little piece of wire, nichrome wire, resistance wire, would just be looped over there uh, and soldered on, or what you know, I, I don't know how well soda would take to that wire. And then at the other end, uh, some standard wires are attached. This is then dipped in an explosive compound. And then once that's uh, set, it's dipped again in a sort of lacquer just to protect it, to provide a shell around it. So this uh, little device here, which I've lost, uh, is glossy. It's got a, a glossy finish on it. Uh, and that's the lacquer to keep it dry. And the idea is that when you apply current through this, and it is a current operated device, I triggered um, that device, the device you saw inside the light fitting, this is part of it, was just a little battery pack with a couple of double A's. I had two switches for safety. I've got this one as a sort of master switch, which isn't really what you'd call a super safe device, but two switches in the series does increase that gr safety greatly, particularly when you're pointing at your face at one point in the video. And the idea is that when you apply current across this, as soon as it exceeds about one, uh, 500 milliamps is a common one, then the device, the wire will glow red hot and it will ignite the compound and that will then go pop and it will trigger the explosive charge. Shall we do that right now? Yes, we shall. I'm just going to actually scrape the explosive residue here into a small bag. That sounds like a good idea. That should be safe. I'll just scrape it and just pour it all over the floor. So let's get that off my bench. So I don't have a little extra effect here. And then I shall get this. I'll get this back out of the way. So and bring back some light here. That's better. And the bigger effects, you'll notice that the wires in this one are actually twisted together. And the reason for that is just to prevent any accidental powering of this. If it went across batteries or uh, in some, you know, it's believed that electrostatic discharge can cause problems. And, or even walkie-talkie pickup, I'm not so convinced. It takes a lot of current to fire these things. Um, a common technique for testing the pyro system is okay, is to pass a small current through these um, just enough to light an LED, and that shows you that your circuit is intact. Interesting thing, if you're firing several of these at once, you'd think you'd just wire them all in parallel, but you actually wire them in series. You can wire a modest number of matched electric matches in series, and they'll all go off together. It seems sort of counterintuitive, but uh, that's the way it is. So uh, I'm going to plug this in here, to the just shove it down the end of these. And then I'm going to warn you that there's going to be a loud bang. Or at least a, a sort of crack noise. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Or maybe there won't. Okay, what have I done? Tell you what. Let's uh, use the bench power supply. It's got, uh, going to make a better connection just shoving it down wires. Down terminals. Uh, 
things that go wrong. So uh, yeah, let's set this to about 4 volts, should be enough. Try again. See, nothing really major, just a little burst of flame out the end, but uh, that's enough. It actually smells like resistor. It smells like a burnt resistor, but that's enough to uh, actually trigger then the, the main explosive charge and uh, create an effect. Some of these do go with quite a crack, but that, that's a tiny wee one. All, all it's, they're really designed, all it has to do is uh, ignite the powder in there though. So um, yeah, that's uh, how a robotic works. The bigger ones are just scaled up. They've got this cup in here, they've got much more powder. This is an XL, um, and given that the this is a medium, which uh, if anything, maybe small would have actually been fine for the application, it was quite a pop out that light fitting. Uh, and uh, the screen of the camera, I didn't see this uh, until later, it, I saw what looked like dirt on it. But one of the sparks had actually hit the screen of the uh, phone uh, because it was the front the uh, front facing camera that I was using, the selfie camera. It had hit the screen and just left a wee pock mark in the glass and I didn't realise, I thought it was dirt and I scratched it. And then when I scratched it with the fingernail, the glass at the side of the screen just went tink and it's like, oh well, these things happen. So that's it, uh, the robotic pyrotechnic device. Oh, I should say, sources for these in the UK would be Lemaitre, or in this case, these ones came from Wells Fireworks. But uh, you can get these from uh, a wide variety of uh, the pyrotechnics companies that actually make this stuff in America, UK, Holland, Germany, Canada, wherever, you know, that you've got a fireworks manufacturing facility. One of their main businesses will be uh, pyro special effects pyrotechnics because there's an ongoing need for them during the year. So, yes, good, good stuff, all entertaining. I've just thought of an extra worthy addition to this video, and that is to show how electric matches are made in the first place. When hobbyists, and I suppose ultimately the professionals, are doing it the same way, uh, make their own electric matches, to rather than try and you know get a bit, bit of circuit board material and just tack a tiny little bit of wire across the end, what they normally do is they get a larger piece of material and they wind the wire round. So uh, they just wind it round and round the uh, material like this, and then solder it just where it loops over the end. And they do that uh, on both sides of the piece of material. And then they cut the material down the middle and cut each of those little joints there. So they end up with lots of strips of material with the uh, connection, the little bit of nichrome wire and then the weed tail which they can cut off. And um, it's worth mentioning that the resistance of these is typically in the region of about one ohm. They're very low resistance. Uh, ultimately, that's a safety feature. It's an easy way to trigger them because, you know, they give off a, off a lot of heat at the end. They pass a lot of current. But um, it also uh, means that uh, they're less susceptible to false triggering. Uh, I was looking at the construction of this, and uh, if we go back to the looking at the sort of tube construction, the plug at the end, it turns out that there's the same little cup that was uh, pointing down the way to hold the... Uh, explosive matter inside. They've got the identical little cup at the other end pushed in the other way and they've made a little hole in it and poked the electric match through. And I'm guessing that maybe they put a small tack of the hot melt glue in just to hold that in place initially. Pressed it in and then they flooded that whole area, not just filling that little cup with the hot melt glue but also the lower area of the uh, mortar tube itself so that it gave a good seal to make sure that you know it can't blow out this end, it always goes out the other end. So that's uh, an interesting construction. Now, uh, I mentioned that you can buy these from various pyro companies and it's worth mentioning that in general they will supply to individuals. Don't be a nuisance though, don't try and order tiny little quantities, don't say could I have one of each please. Uh, they're really on in, only interested in dealing with uh, boxes, box quantities of these, and there will be quite expensive shipping because it's hazardous material, so it's hazmat shipping. Um, also, it depends where you're based in the world, what sort of license you require. In most instances, you don't need a pyrotechnic license. It helps if you attend a basic awareness course, which is often run by the pyro companies or special effects companies. Um, but in most instances, you don't need that. I don't need any formal education. A lot of it is down to common sense. However, as soon as you go into an area where there are people or you're dealing with actors, then it does make sense to have 
some, well, liability insurance and uh, some sort of form of certification because that just makes things easier if there's an accident. Not that uh, I've had an accident yet. Not that I'm planning on having an accident uh, with pyrotechnics. Well, personal accidents are permitted, obviously. Uh, a friend did have an accident uh, with these devices. Now, this one has the wires twisted together. That one didn't have the wires twisted together. Stripped but not twisted together. My friend was working his bench and he had a pyrotechnic device sitting, a Lumetra flash cartridge with two pins sticking out the back. And he was clearing some space and pushed it out of the way and it went across a PP3 battery and detonated in his hand. And, you know, it doesn't... You think they're quite small effects and they're relatively safe to use in the vicinity of props and things like that. But they will cause a significant burn and that's exactly what happened to him. He sent me a picture. It was like, oh, the whole front of his hand was just burned. All the skin was off. It was like horrible. Um, but yes... Uh, interesting things, interesting and entertaining pyrotechnic devices. Um, certainly quite enjoyable when they are used on you know productions that you're working on. And last but not least, uh, yeah, that worked. <laughs>